but it's clear that you have the power to learn about Teresa Falderon's case. You just have refused to do that, right? Ob objection. That's First of all, it's argumentative, broad and vague, compound, and again, you misstate her testimony. Go ahead and answer if you can. I don't know anything about this case. Sure. My question is whether you're not, we've established that you say that you don't know anything about this case. My question is only on the, the um, ability that you have to learn more about this case. Do you believe, as school board president, that you have the ability to learn about this case? Okay. Yes. Right. Okay. So, because you have the ability to, and you have not done that, is it fair to then say that you have refused to do it? That is incorrect. Okay. Is it also fair to say that you've been aware of this case since at least May 15th of uh, last year? Okay. It would say, I would say yes. When okay. the incident occurred, that's when I found out about it. Okay. So from, and because you didn't also get, you didn't read the demand letter that was sent to you, correct? I don't know what you're talking about. Working this the exhibit, the letter that's right in front of you. Oh, this exhibit one here. Five for six. the record. Six for the record. Thank six. You. Yeah, you I didn't read that letter, right? That this is not familiar to me. Okay. I see a lot of verbiage and information in here that is new to me. So I would say I have not seen this. Okay. There's a lot of things in here. You know, like a uh, verdict of up to the cap of three hundred thousand dollars, and all of the settlement information, and all of this. Um, it's not. It's not familiar to me at all. Okay, and, and I know my name is on it, but okay. But you believe? Do you believe that if you had read it, it would have been familiar to you, or would be familiar to you? Check the form of questions. Broad vague calls for speculation. Go ahead and answer it if you can. I would say, I would say some of that would have stuck out. Oh, okay. So now going back to where we were, as of at least May fifteenth of last year, you were aware of this case, and since that time, you've had the ability and the authority to direct an investigation uh, into this case. Correct. Check the form questions. Broad, vague, also compound. Go ahead and answer if you can. I would say. In that this case was already ongoing before, probably before I was even on the board. But if I were on the board, the fact is I knew nothing about it. Okay. Who do you believe directs the attorneys for the school district? The board directors have the authorization to reach out to, to the attorneys as they see fit. Individually? If they need to, if there's something that they need to confer with the city attorney with, they can do so. Otherwise, it's directed through um, board governance or HR. So that would be um, Dr. Mann or uh, Adrian Magdalene, right? Yes. Huh. That's, that's what I've been exposed to. So. so it's fair to say that Dr. Mann, or let's say the board clerk, or the head of HR, the ones who are actually directing the attorneys for NPS. Is that true? Second form question. Brian Vague also calls for speculation. I can't answer that in well, its entirety. I can only speak for my exposure, my personal knowledge. Okay. Do you have any duties with regard to uh, the school district? Check the form question. Brian Vague, go ahead and answer it. Would you identify duties, please? Sure. This, and I appreciate that. So are you required by law to do anything uh, with regard to the school district? Same objection. That's still... It, I mean, I don't know how to answer the question because you're not being specific enough to say um, what it is you need to know that I'm responsible for doing. Well, sure. So the question is, um, please don't be looking to me for a source of guidance as to what your job duties are. I'm, the question is being directed at you, which is, can you please tell us what your duties are with regard to the school district? Check the foreign person. If you know. Object to the foreign person. It's broad and vague. Calls for speculation. The question is inarticulate. Go ahead and answer if you can. 
Thanks for that criticism. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, the one thing is my responsibilities are to the school district and the students therein. That's first and foremost as a board director. What does that mean? That means that I should be conferring with the schools. I should be visiting the schools in my district, conferring with them to make sure that I'm aware of what um, what their pluses and minuses are, if you will, what's going well, and uh, working on what is not doing so well. Should, with that in mind, should you be visiting MPSU? Um, I have not ever been made aware of um, my responsibilities to MPSU. Okay. Do does the MP does the school uh, board of I'm not sure how to say it. It's the board of school directors. I believe is the correct pronunciation. Mm -hmm. uh, is that responsible for MPS? Uh, you. What I'm what I just said was that I've not been made aware of what my responsibilities are or should be to MPSU. I appreciate that. Can you answer my question, which I'll just repeat here, and it's simply this. Does the, is the board responsible for MPSU? And I'm saying I cannot answer that specifically, yes or no, because I was never um, given any such information. Okay. Well, after leaving So here, I can't say whether it is or it is not. Okay. Fair. Do you believe who, other than the board, is running MPSU, if you know? Check the form of questions. Brad and Vig calls for speculation. Also, misstates her testimony. She didn't say the board is responsible for running MPSU. Go ahead and answer if you can. What I'm saying is I've not been made aware of the board's responsibilities to MPSU. Okay. Fair enough. MPSU, is that a creation of Milwaukee Public Schools? I do not know. Oh. That's, that's the reason why. When, and when did you become, when did you, when were you aware that you didn't know this? <laughs> when you were, when you were aware you didn't know something? Sure. I'm going to check the form of the question. It's broad and vague calls for speculation. I don't know how you can know when you're aware of something you don't know. <laughs> what I'm saying is that I do not know the background on MPSU. Okay. Who runs MPSU? Who's in charge of MPSU? I cannot tell you that. Have you ever had any reports regarding MPSU as a board member? Not that I'm aware of. It seems to be a separate entity. Um, I know very little about MPSU. Okay. So I guess then we'll just start with what are you aware of uh, about MPSU? Questions brought in big. Go ahead and answer. Well, I said that before, what the objective is of it is, is what I'm aware of. I've not been exposed to it. So you're aware of its objectives, and that's it, right? Yes. That, the one that I'm aware of, which there could be more. My knowledge of MTSU is very limited. Okay. Do you know Teresa Falleron? No, I do not. Okay. Do you believe that she works for M Milwaukee Public Schools? I would assume she does. Okay. Have you ever um, come across Teresa Falderon at any school board meetings? I did not know who she was. Okay. So from that answer, I'm uh, going to infer that uh, the answer is yes. I, she was pointed out to me at a board meeting recently when she was there sitting on the front row with a white poster board. Okay, who pointed you her out to you? I don't know, I just looked around and said, well, who is that woman? Because I did not, you know, she was writing these things on the poster board, which caught my attention naturally, and I wanted to know who she was. Okay, so other than that time some month ago, you have, not, have you ever seen her at a school board meeting? I don't know, because I didn't know her. Okay. And I still don't, I'm not, been introduced to her ever. I've never ever spoken to her at all. I did not know who she was. It so was just that identity, who's that woman sitting there with the whiteboard type thing. Okay. Now that you are aware of who Teresa Falleron is, 
do you recall ever seeing her at any school board meetings prior to some months ago? I don't know. Okay. Do you believe she ever spoke at any school board meetings? She may have. Mm -hmm. And are speakers to school board meetings, are they required to identify themselves in any way? They do. Okay. And every time, right? All the time. Right, because you won't let them speak if they don't identify themselves, correct? Correct. Okay. Have you ever cut Teresa Falderon off while she was speaking? Jake, the following question. I don't know. Brad Bank also calls for speculation. Fair enough. We'll go back there. Have you ever cut anybody off while they were speaking? There are occasions that if you're a committee chair and a person goes on and on and on, there are rules that are to be adhered to by the speakers. Great. Other than somebody going over their allotted time, have you ever cut off a speaker uh, while you were a committee chair, for example? Check the phone question. It's broad and vague, and this line of questioning is irrelevant to this particular matter. Go ahead and answer it if you can. I don't know the answer to that. I have cut people off for going over time, for sure. And then the other issue is, um, as we've been taught by board governance that we're to follow, and Robert's rules of order, that whole nine yards, um, sticking to the um, agenda item. Okay. As the subject. And when you say board governance, you're talking about Jackie Mann? Yeah. Okay. And so, has Jackie Mann ever told you that you could cut off speakers for going off topic? She does it, yes. Okay. Have you ever done it? I said specifically that I'm not so sure that I have. Um, I could have, for sure. Okay. That's something you would do, it's just not something you recall doing. Is that fair? Correct. Okay. So if there was a video of you doing that, um, you wouldn't dispute that video, would you? Right. Let me check for any questions. Brad Vig also lacks foundation. Okay. And just for the record, I'm going to put this document in front of you as Exhibit 7. Chris, I'll give this one to you here. And I believe this is your affidavit uh, in this matter. Correct me if I'm wrong. The you want this one to have this one? I haven't had enough. Here, while we put on the one she's got in front of her so we keep everything together. Great. So just briefly, if you can look to the second page there, you'll identify that as your signature, right? Yes. And the 15th, and it's signed on the 15th of May of this mm -hmm. year, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. Remember, yes. yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> And uh, we have this <coughs> document here at the top that says Teresa Falderon versus Milwaukee Board of School Directors. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. And you read this entire document before you signed it, right? Yes. Okay. So uh, with that in mind, it's fair to say that on May 15th uh, of 2023, you were aware of this case? Yes. Okay. Did you discuss uh, this um, affidavit with anybody other than Mr. Reardon? No. Okay. Did you discuss the incident that it described in the affidavit with anybody other than Mr. Reardon? My family, my husband, of course. Okay. So, I'm going to um, go back, and I think this is just, excuse me, if you look here. It's in the six. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. So, uh, reading for this letter here, um, I'll, it says, One year ago, we brought to your attention the fact that when a whistleblower reports misconduct to MPS, MPS policy, as personally directed by Superintendent Posley, is to retaliate. Is that a true statement or no? Whoa, 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 hold on a second. I'm going to object to the forum questions. Broad and vague. Calls for speculation. And... It's argumentative. Go ahead and answer if you can. And specifically, um, we're talking about the second paragraph, correct? That you just read. Mm -hmm. We just read. It. Yep. Uh, no, it's the. Yeah, second paragraph. We got it. Page one. Why don't you read it? We do through it pretty quickly. We brought to your attention the fact that when a whistleblower reports misconduct to MPS, MPS policy as personally directed by Superintendent Posley is to retaliate. Is that a true statement? I don't know. Why not? 
I simply don't know. As I said before, this document doesn't really look familiar to me at all. Sure. And I'm not asking you in the context of this letter or whether you've read this letter. I'm asking you in the context of the school board president, your knowledge and experience of that. Can you answer in that context, please? Check the form questions, broad and vague. Also calls for speculation. He's talking about is this the is this the policy of Milwaukee Public Schools to have folks in retaliation? That's what he's talking about. To my knowledge, there's no such policy. Oh, okay. Now, is it true that a year ago uh, that it was brought to your attention um, about whistleblower misconduct in MPS by um, that, sorry, I'll just, I will shorten that and rephrase uh, the question entirely. Is it true that Superintendent Posley personally directed retaliation against Deb Keith? I, I, I'm going to check the forum questions. First of all, it's argumentative. Secondly, I'm going to instruct her not to answer the question based on the previously filed motion for protective order. Okay. Are you aware of Deb Keither's complaints against Keith Posley? I do not know her complaints to Keith uh, regarding Dr. Posley. Okay. And were you present when Matt Chasen presented to the board on, I believe, January 21st of 2021 about Keith... Uh, Posley's, the complaints against Keith Posley by Deborah Keith. I don't remember. Okay. So, and I want to be clear, you don't remember being present or you don't remember getting that report? I would say both. Um, January of last year, I was home with COVID. Okay. I'm not sure I was even at the meeting. Sure. This is 2021 that we're talking about. January 21st, 2021. January of 2021 um, is around the time I was hospitalized. And um, I can't say. Okay. So the notes of um, Mr. Chasen for that report that he made to you, um, indicate that he read out his report verbatim. Is that something that Mr. Chasen normally did? Check the form questions. Broad and vague. Closer speculation. Go ahead and answer if you can. Um, that depends on what the topic is and how much detail that he has available to even present. Okay. So the next one, please, if you will. Do you know who Miriam Horowitz is? Yes. Okay. Do you know who Jeremiah Holiday is? Yes. Okay. Who is Miriam Horowitz? Um, I met her as an attorney. I think she was with the city attorney's office. It could have been a private firm. I'm not sure. Okay. It's been a while since I've seen her, but she's an attorney that has worked with the district quite some time ago. Okay. And Dr. Holliday is who? He was, um, when I got on the board, he was an interim uh, chief over the Department of Academics. Okay, he's not the chief of academics anymore, right? Correct. Why not? It had to do with all of this with Deb Kiefer, I would assume, and um, the current um, chief or director of that department is a woman by the name of Jennifer Howell. Okay, and you were on the board uh, at the time the decision was made not to uh, keep uh, Dr. Holiday in as interim, right? Correct. Okay. And you, based on that uh, attendance at the board, do you know why he was not made? Or sorry, let's put it like that. Does that, what you just described, does that reflect your feelings about why uh, he was not uh, made the permanent chief? 
I haven't read this, so... No, but the question is to your statement My. that you just said, uh, and I, we can read it back if that's necessary. But my question is, is that uh, you were referencing Deb Keither with regard to Jeremiah Holliday. And I said that was an assumption. Okay. How, when did you become aware of Deborah Keither's case? Oh, it, it wasn't, um, it wasn't, when was this? June 15, 2021. I'm not sure. It was a while before. I, I knew what it was. Okay, can you turn to the bottom of page five in this document, please? And I guess we'll look at the, if you look at the last page, please. The last page? The last, the ultimate page there, page seven. This document is electronically signed by Miriam Horwitz, right? And it's sent to Jackie Mann. That's board governance, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you, did you receive this letter at any time? Uh, I would say, again, no. No. You've never received this letter before? Well, she's not trying to look. Thanks for that testimony. Can well, you please show her the last page? She's not carbon copy. I appreciate that testimony, Chris. If you'd kindly stop influencing this witness's testimony, that would be appropriate. I'm not, but you can see that for yourself. Okay. Uh, that's not how this works. I ask a question of the witness, and the witness gives us her testimony, not your testimony. Thank you, Chris. So, are you able to answer my question, please? And your question. Again. Did you ever read this letter before? No. Okay. Now, looking at the bottom of page five, can you go there, please? Okay, on January 21st, 2021, the board had a special meeting and closed session concerning Dr. Holiday. The board at that time consisted of, and do you see your name there? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay, and then I'll direct you to the top of page six, please. Mm -hmm. All right, and then there's more board member names, and then it says only Mr. Peterson was absent from the 121-2021 meeting. Do you see that there? Yes. Okay. And based on that, do you believe that you were present at this meeting? Yes. Okay. You just don't recall it at all. Is that fair? Right. Okay. Which I stated that. Just, just one second, please. And then uh, it says the only board member willing to confirm Dr. Holliday as CAO was one black female member. Mm -hmm. Do you see that there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Was that you or somebody else? Yes. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not answering that question. I'm responding to yeah. him. You, you can't do it. Mm -hmm. you got to do the Okay. Yes. To be honest, um, as I remember this, my answer is no, that is not me. Okay. So, who was it? I have no idea. Okay. Well, if it wasn't you, then it would have had to have been... Susquehanna Taylor or Annie Woodward, correct? I would assume so. Okay. It says here, Dr. Posley was forced to concede that he would not be able to get Dr. Holiday confirmed to CAO. Is that a true statement? Where are you reading from? The Right where we were, page six on the second paragraph. You were on page five before. Sure, and then we moved on to page six at the top and the second paragraph, and then we read the first sentence of that paragraph, and now we're reading the second could, sentence of that paragraph. If you could identify the par page and paragraph before you read it, I'd appreciate it. Okay, appreciate that. So is that a true statement, Director Herndon? Now, where were you reading? Dr. P sir, second, third sentence now of the second paragraph. Dr. Posley was first to concede that he would not be able to get Dr. Holiday confirmed as CAO. Is that a true statement? I don't see that on this page. It's in the first paragraph on page six. Oh, not the third paragraph. Right. 